In today's session, we will start our next session with the topic binary storage and registers. So now, what does mean by a binary storage? How to construct your registers? Those are all things we have to learn in today's session. So now, before we were going to the binary storage device, let me learn about what does mean by a binary cell. So how many inputs it is having, how many outputs, what is the purpose of binary cell. So a binary cell is nothing but a kind of a one bit storage device. So which can capable of loading your one, one bit of your binary information or a binary character. And they are used to store your digital information in your digital electronics. So now it is having three inputs and one output. So in these three inputs, the first input is used as a selection input. So which can select a particular binary cell in your memory and input. So if I wanted to enable upon selecting your binary cell, so let me verify the operation. Is it for a read operation or you wanted to store some data into the binary cell? So you want to take the data from a binary cell or you wanted to write or you wanted to store a data into the binary cell that depends on the control signal which is read or write. So if read is enabled, so then the data which is stored previously or loaded or stored in your binary cell is retrieved from the output terminal. If it is write is enabled, so then it will enable the input signal. So from your external data, we were going to transfer a binary zero or a binary one based on our requirement through the input and then that given input is stored into the binary cell so this is the way of selecting a particular so using your address of the binary cell let me select first the binary cell then based on your the data is retrieved from your binary cell or you wanted to store a new data it to the binary cell so based on that we will enable the one of the control signal which is your read or write so whenever the read is enabled so then the data is taken out from your binary cell through the output terminal if it is write is enabled on your control signal then it will provide a path from your external inputs through your input terminal to store a new data into the binary cell so now so your register is a collection of your these binary cells which can hold one bit of binary information so now as we already discussed your a group of flip-flops can hold one bit of data so now a register is constructed using your a collection of flip-flops so now based on your the length of your register if it is an n bit register so we have to take that n number of flip-flops to be used to store the data information in addition with this flip-flops let me connect some combinational parts of your digital circuit which can provide your data processing task and then these registers are commonly used for temporary storage of your binary data into a processor instead of storing your data directly into the memory devices to process your data so we are going to use your registers and they are very faster so more convenient than your main memory devices so more registers can help to speed up your complex calculations of your processing of your data so now next we will move to your basic register construction how it is built with your flip-flops and how it stores your multiple bits so having your a bunch of your flip-flops together can form a register now in order to construct a buffer register buffer is nothing but whatever you give the input that will the output will follow your input so that is called as a buffer register now let me construct a four bit buffer register here in order to implement this buffer register of four bit we have to take four data flip-flops and the data flip-flops reset or your clear inputs and your clock input must be connected commonly from all the flip-flops of four so upon connecting that common clock signal and common clear signal this register now it becomes the synchronous sequential circuit as here we have take we are applying the common circuit at a time all the flip-flops are clocked simultaneously hence 
this register comes under your synchronous sequential circuit as well as so here also we have provided the asynchronous input reset input so for initial for in, in when you are doing the operation on your register in order to clear all the data flip flop contents so we were going to use the asynchronous inputs and those asynchronous inputs are also connected commonly as your with, with your only one control signal which is clear signal so now so in order to store the data so the suitable flip flop out of the four which i am using is a data flip flop since this data flip flop a truth table is very simpler as well as yeah, it is transparent to the input what you give that will be copied at the output of your flip flop so your next state resembles your input so hence we prefer the data flip flop to construct your or to obtain the output of, or to obtain your logical diagram of your register so now here as we have we need to construct a forward register hence we prefer the forward data flip flops and upon giving the clock signal if you transfer the external inputs through this d0 to d3 inputs so here d0 to d3 is copied at your output for every clock cycle of your input signal so like this we were going to construct the buffer register so upon giving the clock signal the new data will be entered through this data input terminal that will give you the output so so for every clock say cycle of your input so whatever you give through the data input. for example now i have given your data input of 1011 as your as i wanted to store into the buffer register so hence here d3 must be loaded with 1 d2 is loaded with 0 d1 is loaded with 1 logic 1 and d0 is transferred with the data input of logic 1 upon giving the clock signal so when you apply a clock signal all the data flip flop at a time they are all are clock since the next state of your d flip flop always resemble it input so first q0 is d0 so hence q0 will give you the logic 1 q1 will give you the logical 1 output q2 will give you the logical 0 output and q3 will give you the logical 1 output so like this so the given 4 bit data is loaded into the 4 bit register so using the d flop now in order to control that data so or to accept your new data for your next clock cycles of your input we are going to use the controlled buffer register in this controlled buffer register we are going to use one control signal which is called as load so when load is zero so your next state of the flip-flop must has to follow the previous state when load become one it has to accept the new values from its data inputs of d0 to d3 so in order to obtain that so if we take the block diagram it will have the parallel inputs of d0 to d3 along with your parallel outputs q0 q1 q2 q3 q0 equal to d0 and q1 equal to d1 along with q2 equal to d2 next q3 equal to d3 this will possible when load control signal is equal to logic 1 and upon giving the clock signal then only it will be possible so to enter the data through this data inputs of d0 to d3 that will give you the output of q0 to q3 if load input is 0 so then the previous data whatever we obtained so that will be coming as your data so q3 will be connected to the two, d3 q2 is connected to d2 q1 is connected to the d1 and q0 is connected to the d0 so previous states are again apply as your inputs to this data inputs if load control is zero so no nothing not no new data if i wanted to transfer into the buffer register then we will apply your load equal to zero which can have your inputs from your previous states so now in order to construct that so we are going to use along with this data flip flop the common cloak and common clear signal we are going to use some combination circuits of two NAND gates with a one OR gate. So OR gate output is transferred as your data inputs of every flip-flop. If load is equal to one, so then, so here, the 
logic uh, that and gates 1 2 3 4 all these 1 2 4 and gates and gates are activated hence through this and gates the x naught is transferred as your data input so when load is equal to 1 so if load is equal to 0 so then it is complemented so hence the second line will be activated when this is activated so hence here so the second input to this and gate which is 5 6 7 8 so these all and gates are enabled when these gates are enabled the previous data which is q naught is transferred through your fifth input to the data input and here the q1 is transferred through your sixth and gate to the data input of your second flip flop q2 is transferred as your data input to the d2 and q3 is transferred as your input to the d3 so like this and you if you wanted to enter uh, new data so then the load must be equal to 1 or else so the load must be equal to 0 which can have your previous state so hence this is called as your controlled buffer register based on your external signal load so we can enter the new data or else we can reload your previous data or the previous state of your register so this is the way we can construct your registers in the next class we are going to deal with your shift registers